Hey guys, welcome back. Tonight we're back out here in the garage. Uh, we've got Maddie's bike back up on the lift, and she's got a shade over 15,000 miles on it now, so it is due for service again. Uh, when you're servicing your motorcycle, things that you need to take into account, you should always be checking your tire pressure every time you ride. But definitely, while you're servicing it, check your tire pressures, check your brake fluid levels, check the condition of your fluids, check your coolant, uh, make sure your coolant is full, make sure it looks good still. And also check your chain tension in the case of the CB500X. It is a chain drive. If you have a belt drive, you need to check your belt tension, make sure you, the slack in your belt is where it should be, if not adjust it. Uh, but go over, check the whole motorcycle, make sure all your lights are working. Make sure everything is the way it is supposed to be. When you're doing that service, take that extra time to give it a good once over. Check your tires, make sure you don't see any defects, make sure you don't see anything that needs to be fixed. Uh, it's also a good time if you feel like your clutch is coming out of adjustment to make a clutch adjustment. Uh, she has not complained about her clutch and I pulled the bike in here, the clutch feels fine. So I'm not gonna worry about making a clutch adjustment because the other side of that coin is if it's not broke, don't fix it. So. If it feels good, if it works good, there's no reason to monkey with it because you could make it worse if you don't know exactly what you're doing. Uh, now, what we're going to be using, because first and foremost is the oil change. We have the Honda GN4 10W30. Uh, this bike does require 10W30 oil. The only other person, the only other manufacturer that I know of so far that makes a 1030 in a motorcycle oil is Lucas. You would see what it looked like. This is the Lucas High Performance Motorcycle Oil. It's a full synthetic 1030 and if you notice it says it is formulated for wet clutches. Um, so this is another option for these bikes and Lucas is a really good brand. So I'm not sponsored by them or anything. Lucas if you're watching hey reach out to me. I'd be more than welcome for a sponsorship but uh, at any rate they do make a really good oil. So uh, this is I think this stuff I got through O'Reilly's. Um, you can also get it, I believe, through Advanced Auto Parts. So, uh, it's another option for you guys. Lucas does make a really good oil, uh, but you want to make sure that uh, it is, so like this one says back here on the back, that it conforms to Honda, uh, Honda requirements for motorcycle lubricants. You want to make sure it is for a motorcycle because in the case of this motorcycle, it has a wet clutch. So if you use a uh, automotive type engine oil in this, that's gonna cause your clutch to slip. It can cause premature clutch failure. You don't wanna do that. You need to use an oil that is designed for a wet clutch. So we've got the Honda GN4 1030. We also have the Honda oil filter. It is the 15410. MFJ-D02, that is the part number. Um, we, I've got a K&N on it right now. I used the K&N at the last service. K&N makes a really good oil filter. I just had to meet the Honda dealer picking up the oil. And realistically, the Honda Genuine oil filter versus the K&N, the price is about the same. So we might as well just go with the, uh, go with the Honda. Um, save me one stop. Now, Real quick, I'm gonna get this thing raised up in the air and on her particular bike, trying to aim you down here, she has, down here, she has an SW Motec skid plate. Uh, in order to do the oil change on hers, we have to remove that SW Motec skid plate because it's completely in the way and they don't give you areas to get in there and service it. So I'll get that off because, and I'm not gonna show that on video because that's not gonna apply to everyone. Uh, and then I will show you the rest of going through servicing and checking the bike. And also keep in mind, um, this is a good time to check your brake pad thickness. Uh, and just go over the whole bike. While you've got it sitting there, take the extra time, go over everything, make sure it is a good, good top running condition because the condition of this motorcycle in, is going to making sure it's in top shape is going to keep you from having a mechanical failure that could potentially cause you to have an accident. So, 
always make sure you're taking care of your stuff. All right, give me just a minute. We'll get that skid plate off. We'll be right back. All right, so we have the bike warming up right at the moment. And on the CB500X, I can my light, right? Right up here, really hard to see, that is your coolant overflow bottle. So there is a... There's a lower and an upper mark. You want to make sure that's full. We're going to have to, it's hard to see here. I'm going to have to top that one off. Uh, while you're down here, check your chain slider that's right here on the bottom of your swing arm. We just replaced this chain. So our chain slack should be good right there. Uh, check your upper chain slider as well, right in there. Make sure it's still in good shape. This is also a good time to potentially lube any of your control pivots if you need to. Uh, so, what I've also done is I've jacked the bike up. I've got the rear tire resting on some, some wood blocks so that we can easily access the oil drain plug that is right here and the oil filter that is up on the front and get the drain pan under there so we're not making a huge mess on our rear. So, we're going to let the engine warm up for just a minute. And just so I can show you guys, we'll come around to this side. And before you warm it up, it'd be a good time to dig out your radiator cap, which is right in there. Well, that means you can see from that angle. That's your radiator cap and check the actual fluid level in your radiator. So uh, you have, actually have to take some of the side, the side fairing off to get to it, but this is the prime time to do so. While we're, we're gonna let this warm up a minute and to actually get to that radiator cap, you need to remove that screw right there. There's another screw right there. Then you can take this side piece off right here. And you should be able to get into that radiator cap. So we're gonna let it warm up. I'll bring you back before we start changing the oil. All right, now that we've got it warmed up a bit, um, I've got my drain pan position down here and I'm gonna have to slide it forward or off to the side just a little bit Right up here is our drain bolt and our drain plug on the CB 500x is a 12 millimeter So I'm gonna get in here with my ratchet my 12 Break it loose I'm Try not to make a giant mess here of me or the bike or the lift get that get our drain tube out of the way sorry about the flashing light there it's got a mind of its own sometimes problem is with this drain pan you gotta have it way up in the air so this bike only holds three quarts of oil so you can go in the kitchen and you can rob one of your wife's baking dishes i'm sure she'll love you for that or just go down to the local Dollar General and pick up a, a baking dish that'll hold at least three quarts and you'll be fine and it'd be a much lower profile than an automotive style drain pan that'll hold five gallons but this is what we've got so this is what we're working with and we're going to try our best to get that out without dropping it into this series of extensions that I can feed in from back here and use it like a nut driver. And if I do drop in the drain pan, I'll retrieve it. It's not a big deal. Okay. There she goes. She's nice and warm. So she's making a mess everywhere. Now that we've got that draining, as our stream dies off, we can move the drain pan forward to speed up the whole process. There we go. On the front, our oil filter is in plain view. The nice thing about the k and oil filters is they have the that nut made into the front, which makes them easy to remove, and they happen to be a 17 on these particular filters. So, whoop. Sorry about that, I kicked the tripod evidently. We're gonna crack that filter loose. 
and let it drain. As you can see, it's starting to drip. And of course it pees right on one of your exhaust pipes, whew, which are nice and warm now from warming the bike up. So we're just gonna let it drain. Once, it, once it's done draining, we'll take it the rest of the way off. Not the light would quit strobing. Thank you. Now, Prep your new filter to go back on. We're going to take a little bit of oil. Oil up that gasket really well. That way it's nice and slick. It doesn't bind up, doesn't roll up while you're putting it on. Now we can very carefully, without burning the snot out of ourselves, remove the oil filter. It's going to dump. Just let it do its thing. It's pretty well drained. I'm going to set it off to the side. And then we can get our new oil filter right back on. Oh, toasty. Toasty, toasty. Get my fingers. Yeah, you're good. All right, now that we got it on, we're going to take our handy filter wrench and just tighten it up a little bit. You don't need to get it super tight. Generally, half to three quarters of a turn past hand tight. I didn't really get this hand tight just because of the location. I can't get my hand in there easily without burning it. So we're just going to make sure it's nice and snug. We've got the filter off and it's changed. Now on the drain plug, we'll come back here again. So this drain plug, for one reason or another, is missing a sealing washer. And I don't happen to have another one. So, just a little bit of Teflon tape on the threads will keep it from leaking. You just want to remember that as you wrap the Teflon tape, you want to wrap it in the... You want to wrap it so that as you tighten the plug, you thread the plug in, it actually tightens the tape around the plug. It doesn't unwrap, unwrap it, if that makes sense. So, we're going to lay the tape across the top of the plug and rotate the plug the same direction we would as we thread it in. And just give us a couple good wraps on there. And that'll keep it nice and sealed up and keep it from leaking. Now we can slide our drain pan forward, keep it in, in the vicinity to catch the last few drips. going to insert the I'm going to use my extensions again to slide that right in and then just very gently you make you want to make sure you thread it in by hand first get it all the way in by hand as far as you can and then tighten it up with the ratchet that way if it's cross threaded you know before you strip the threads out in your engine case because that's not going to be a good day tight all right now we can wipe off all the oil it's about to drip on our lift make sure everything's nice and clean there we go the same thing up here with the exhaust that way we don't have to smell it Get that all cleaned off we'll dispose of the oil properly okay your oil fill is right here. I'm gonna pull that out. We've got our nice clean, our nice clean motorcycle oil funnel here. And if there is any dust in there, just wipe it out. Not a big deal. All right, service fill on a CB500X. 
is three quarts. So, whoops, sorry guys. We've got our three quarts of GN4 here, 1030. So we're just gonna go ahead and dump those in. All right, so we've got all three quarts of oil in. Technically our service fill is just a touch under three quarts. It's like 2.9 quarts, but oops. going a full three is not gonna hurt. Um, it's, such a, it's, it's such a small amount, it's definitely not gonna hurt it. And uh, a little bit extra, you know, there's gonna always be plenty in there. Now, right down here behind this side cover, that is now a little loose that we don't we don't have this kid plate on is our sight glass uh, you can see our sight glass for our oil fillers right here you have a low mark and a high mark and if you look real closely you can see our air bubble is just above our high mark what we're going to do we're going to we're going to start it for just a second and let it pray let the oil pressure come up let it fill the filter, we'll shut it down, we'll double check it. And as you can see now that we've started it, the sight glass is empty. Oil pressure's up. Go ahead and shut it down. And it may take a few seconds, but that should come back up into the sight glass. So we'll let it sit, we'll check it, and if necessary, we'll go ahead and top it off to get it back up to full. All right, now this is also a good time, as I mentioned, your rear brake fluid reservoir is right here. You can see it is nice and full. The condition looks good, it's not cloudy. Um, up here on the front, do, 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 yeah. Your front brake fluid uh, reservoir has a sight glass right there to check your fluid level. Go ahead and shut the key off. You can see we have plenty of fluid there. Now, if we go to the front of the bike, you can get a good look at your, it's hard to see, but we can get a good look at the front brake pads. Make sure we still have plenty of brake pad left. And you see there's plenty of pad in there. We're definitely not running short on brake pad. Uh, same thing in the rear. If we come back here, you can see the pad thickness in the rear on both sides. I know it's hard to see on that side. That's in good shape. Uh, tire tread depth. We the tire the front's got good tread depth, but it's getting a little uneven on the wear. Um, the rear is getting a little thin, so we're definitely going to have to change them over the winter. But we'll save that for a different video. And then we'll just go through and check off, check through and top off anything else we see along the way. And as you can see, our oil level is returning. We're, we're above the minimum mark now. And as it sits and drains back down out of the engine, it should come back up pretty close to that full mark. So just want to keep an eye on that. Thank you for watching, guys. Please do me a favor. Rate the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share it with your friends. You never know who this might help. Um, I enjoy talking about bikes to a lot of people and it amazes me the people that I run into a second time that go, you know, I looked at your bike or I talked to you about something, I went and bought a bike. It's going to be fun. I actually just met a guy the other day that after looking at my uh, Harley Pan America, he actually went and bought a CB500X. So uh, he's got to go pick it up yet. Yeah, it's, it's hiding up in Wisconsin right now, but it was actually kind of cool to talk to him and he goes, you know what? You inspired me to do something. So share this video. You never know who it might help, who it might inspire. And if you have any questions, as always, throw them down in the comment section. I'd be more than happy to try and answer them for you. Get out there and ride. Enjoy yourselves. Be safe. Make sure you're always checking your bike over. You're always making sure the maintenance is done as it's supposed to be done. Uh, the unfortunate part is car breaks down, blows a tire, 
okay, you can drive it off the side of the road most of the time. Motorcycle breaks down, blows a tire, it may not always be that, that easy. So um, just remember, here in the United States, for most people, motorcycles are a luxury item, they're a toy. Take care of your toys better than you take care of your cars. All right? Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you on the next one.